When you look at all of the extenuating circumstances, there's no question. This matchup against Mississippi State is a must-win game for Shane Beamer and South Carolina. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back on this game day eve edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I am Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast and also a staff writer for Gamecocks Digest over on SI.com. Thank y'all so much, as always, for making the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch for your team every day. We are free and available both wherever you get your audio podcasts daily and also on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and and for free. Post your job for free today at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. We got a lot to touch on for this game day eve edition of Locked On Gamecocks as South Carolina is just a little over 24 hours away from their matchup with the Mississippi State Bulldogs. We'll dive into the biggest storyline coming into this game, South Carolina's three keys to victory, and at the end of the show, as always, I'll give y'all my final thoughts and my prediction for this matchup. Let's start off with the biggest storyline for Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks coming into this game, because considering what has happened up to this point in the season and what all lies ahead for the Gamecocks, this is a must-win game here for Shane Beamer in South Carolina. The biggest reason why it is a must-win is because when it comes to college football and how teams are covered, perception is reality. Even when that reality might not be 100% fair to your football team. And the reality is that right now, everybody looks at South Carolina as a 1-2 and two football team that has underperformed so far this season compared to the momentum and the hype surrounding them heading into this season. Everybody remembers the fact that South Carolina gave up nine sacks against the North Carolina Tar Heels. Nobody, after at least the next couple of weeks, is going to look back at the fact that South Carolina was competitive for the first half of that game against the Georgia Bulldogs. People won't focus on the fact that, going back to the UNC game, South Carolina had their chances. They don't care about the fact that you don't have Juice Wells 100% healthy and that he hasn't been healthy since August. Or the fact that the old line is improving. My point here is... Everything I just mentioned, most of the people out there do not care about that. All they care about are the end results. And right now, South Carolina is a 1-2 and two football team. Having a 1-3 and three start to this football season would send South Carolina a couple steps further backwards in terms of how people perceive them. And this would be a rarity for the Gamecocks. Since 2000, South Carolina has only started 1-3 once. And that took place in 2019. Well, Muschamp's fourth year in Columbia. It's another reason why Shane Pieper cannot afford to start 1-3 here because a lot of people would start to look at how his tenure has gone so far Compare that to Will Muschamp's tenure, and again, they won't look maybe at the context behind their record up to this point in their career at South Carolina. They're going to just look at the final numbers. And if they end up doing it like that, then Shane Beamer, Will Muschamp, they begin to look like very similar coaches in terms of the end results. You know what this game reminds me of? It reminds me of the 2022 game against the Missouri Tigers. Because in a weird sense, South Carolina, they have come out of last week's slate of games looking decent, considering how competitive they were against Georgia, especially in that first half 
where they were leading 14-3 at the break. If you compare that to the Missouri game from 2022, the Gamecocks had won their previous four games leading into that contest. They were ranked in the top 25 for, I want to say, the first time since 2018 when they played against the Georgia Bulldogs as a ranked opponent. South Carolina, they are favored on Saturday against Mississippi State. We'll get more into the spread set by FanDuel later in the show. And they were also a favorite against the Missouri Tigers this past year at home. It's only the third time in the Shane Beamer era that South Carolina is the betting favorite in a home conference matchup. This has not taken place very often. So, what should your takeaway be from that? It should be that the odds makers, at least step by step, they do think that South Carolina has progressed as a program under Shane Beamer. And right now, if you're Shane Beamer, okay, maybe an 8 9 1 season won't take place. Maybe you've got too many issues, whether it be injuries at key spots, maybe the offensive line going through their growing pains right now as you shuffle that lineup. Whatever the case may be, you still have certain goals that you can accomplish here. So at the minimum, you need to try and hold steady for the rest of the 2023 season. My point here is, if you lose this game to Mississippi State, that's a black guy on Shane Beamer's resume and what all he has done for South Carolina up to this point. Because quite frankly, in terms of the coaching matchup, I'm just going to flat out say it. You should not lose this game. You should not lose this game to a guy who is in his first year as a head coach in the SEC, who is about to coach his first ever SEC road game with the Mississippi State Bulldogs. If you're Shane Beamer, you cannot, under any circumstances, lose on Saturday. If you do, honestly, it won't just be the program who, that takes a step back in perception. It'll also be you that takes a step back in terms of how people perceive your job performance so far in Columbia. These are the kind of games that if you're South Carolina, you look at them now and you say, these are games that we should not drop. When we have a bit of optimism coming out of our game from last week, when we no longer are at this massive talent disadvantage compared to the rest of the conference, where we have a coaching staff that at this point, at least in terms of their tenure, they're pretty well established across the board. This can't be a game that you drop. And if you do drop it, that's going to lead to a lot of other questions uncomfortable questions at that, but questions that would be fair because if you could be competitive with the number one ranked Georgia Bulldogs, the back-to-back -back national champions in one weekend, and then the following weekend at home, you potentially drop a game against Mississippi State, which again, I don't think that you will, but if that were to happen, then honestly, it would be fair for everybody to sit there and wonder, what is the direction of the program exactly? Is it still trending in the right direction? Or is it kind of just, again, hovering around the same sort of progression rate? Or maybe, are we starting to see some regression? You do not want those kind of questions to be brought up if you're Shane Beamer. So for that reason and everything else I've talked about to this point, this is a must-win game. For the Gamecocks third year head man and the program as a whole. And if South Carolina is going to ensure that they take care of business against the Mississippi State Bulldogs on Saturday night, there's a few certain things that they're going to have to do to walk out of Williams Bryce Stadium with a victory. And I'm going to touch on each of those keys in just a couple moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. Now, as a small business owner, you never want to find yourself in a position where you're struggling to find the right people. You don't want someone who's not creative to be a photographer. You don't want someone who failed Spanish back in college to be a translator. And you don't want someone who hates coffee to be a barista in your coffee shop. If you're looking for the right people for your small business, then you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. Just add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. And 
Utilize tools like screening questions to filter through the candidates. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free today. Terms and conditions do apply. Today's show is also brought to you by DoorDash. Now, for all of you parents out there that are listening or watching today's show, think about all the responsibilities that you have throughout every given week. You've got your 40-hour work week. You've got to take your kids to and from school. Your kids may have volleyball or baseball practice. You've got yard work you've got to take care of. You've got a ton of things that you got to do around the house. You've got so many priorities in your life that sometimes it takes away from you being able just to go to the grocery store. If you are looking for more convenience when it comes to grocery shopping, DoorDash is where you need to go. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off, up to $20, no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. Don't forget, that's code locked on college for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. Welcome back to this Friday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day. And as always, thank you to each and every one of you everydayers for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your daily choice for South Carolina Gamecock sports coverage. There are going to be three different keys to victory for South Carolina if they want to be sure that they take care of business against the Mississippi State Bulldogs on Saturday night. The first key to this game for South Carolina will be to control the flow of the game early. As we touched on earlier this week, Mississippi State is a football team now on the offensive side of the ball that likes to establish the ground game early on. This is not Mike Leach's air raid team that you've been used to seeing for the last several years. Rest in peace to the Pirate. This is now a football team that uses a pro-style offense to try and get things going on that side of the ball. And the thing is, Mississippi State, while it might be their first year running this system and it has not always looked pretty, they do have a couple good players back there, especially running back Woody Marks, who I would argue is probably the biggest potential game changer now for that offense because of the kind of football that they like to play. And the other thing to keep in mind here, with the rule changes that college football has undergone this year, and the fact that now there's a running clock after first downs unless you're inside two minutes at the end of a half of football. If you cannot stop the run, it's going to hurt you a lot more because that's less opportunities for your offense to be able to go out there and respond to anything that the opposing team's offense does. And while South Carolina's rush defense, I will say, they've not been maybe as bad so far this season as they've been in the last year or so. But they still have not been perfect by any means. They've still had plenty of drives where, quite frankly, they've let opponents continue to extend drives, grind out drives, and make them pay for not being able to make a stop when they've needed to. So if you're Clayton White and you're this defensive coaching staff, early on this game, you do not want to allow Mississippi State to see quick, sustained success in terms of their running game offensively because if you do and Mississippi State can get things going early in this game then they're not going to have you exactly right where they want you because they do play a bit conservative on defense as I'll discuss in a moment but this is a game where Mississippi State their goal is to try and basically make sure that you don't have as many possessions as many opportunities to score points So do not allow them to dictate the pace of this game. You grab the bull by the horns early on when it comes to the game's tempo. That's the first key to victory for the Gamecocks. The second key is to be patient offensively. 
I've talked about with Mississippi State's defense. Mississippi State runs a unique 3-3-5 nickel hybrid defensive scheme. This is a defense that is going to run a lot of zone coverage. That does not mean that they are scared to play man coverage, but zone coverage is typically their preference. You'll see these defensive backs line up 7 yards off the line of scrimmage, sometimes 10-11 yards off the line of scrimmage. Overall, this defense, their goal is to not allow the big play. And so if you're Spencer Rattler and Dow Loggins, what you need to do early on is simply take what the defense gives you. Don't try to push the envelope. Don't try to thread the needle. Just take what they give you, which will be the flats, throw the football out quick, and let your guys on the edge do their job. If you do that early on, and you can have continued success with that, then eventually you'll get your chances to take shots down the field, especially if South Carolina can also control the flow of the game on the defensive side of the ball. So be patient early on. Spencer Rattler, don't be the Spencer Rattler of old who maybe would get a bit frustrated at times if the game was not going your way. Continue to be the Spencer Rattler that you have been this year, which has been a Spencer Rattler that's played with so much poise that has rarely ever let the game get to him in a negative way. If he can do that along with the rest of this offense, I think South Carolina, again, they will increase their chance of winning this football game. And the last key to victory for South Carolina, and I honestly cannot believe I'm going to say this because I never would have said this a year ago, force Will Rogers to play hero ball in this football game. If I'm South Carolina's defense, my number one priority in this game, as I alluded to with the first key to victory, is to stop this ground game, or at least slow it down enough to where it's not really effective. And Mississippi State has to convert multiple third down attempts on the same drive and throughout the entire football game. And hopefully, if South Carolina has a successful night on the defensive end, what that means is you're going to force Mississippi State to convert some third and long passing situations. Now, again, a year or two ago, you would have never said this about Will Rogers, but here's the thing. Will Rogers is now in a completely different offensive system that, quite frankly, is foreign to him. And when you watch how they played the last couple weeks, you could definitely tell Will Rogers is not comfortable in this offense. There have been plenty of times where he has been on a different page compared to his wide receiver. There have been moments where he has thrown the ball erratically in the short and intermediate ranges of the field. Will Rogers and this passing game, quite frankly, they're just completely out of sorts right now for Mississippi State. And the other thing is, the Bulldogs have been quite fortunate that they have yet to play on the road. But on Saturday night, that all is going to change. South Carolina is known for having one of the best home field environments in the entire country, in this entire sport. That stadium is going to be loud. It is supposed to be sold out. And I think that South Carolina's fans understand the importance of this football game as much as I talked about it at the beginning of this show. So if you're South Carolina, you need to really make sure that number two does not feel comfortable back there in the pocket. Force him to have to make a bunch of unbelievable throws throughout the entire football game. And if Mississippi State does somehow find a way to beat you, then at least you could sit there and say, we made probably their best player, the most productive player on their entire football team, historically speaking, beat us. And he did. But I think you got to force him to do that because I think South Carolina, quite frankly, they can have a bunch of success against this Bulldog offense if they can make them have to throw the football a lot in this game. I don't see any vertical threats in this receiving core. And this offensive line, from what I have heard and what I have seen this week, has not been a good unit so far this season. They've gone through their own struggles, trying to find the right five guys up front that can handle some of these SEC pass rushers. So if you make it to where Will Rogers has got to make things happen back there, unlike years past, I think that that's going to bode well for the Gamecocks in this case. So those are my three keys to victory. Control the flow of the game early, be patient offensively, and force Will Rogers to play hero ball. You do all that, Shane Beamer in South Carolina, you will walk out of Williams-Brice Stadium with a win 
this weekend. Now, I'll go over my final overall thoughts on this game and give y'all my final prediction in just a couple of moments. Before I put a bow on this game day eve edition of Locked On Gamecocks, today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. The New England Patriots and New York Jets have not gotten off to a good start this football season. Both teams currently sit at 0-2, and they both desperately need a win. And guess what? They both play each other on Sunday afternoon at 1.01 p.m. Eastern Time. The Patriots are currently 2.5-point favorites on the road playing the New York Jets. The Jets' money line, by the way, is plus 128. Do you think that Bill Belichick and the Patriots can find a way to get out of their slump? If so, now's the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel is the official betting partner of the NFL. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day in just 30 minutes. All right, let's get into some of my final thoughts on this game. This is a classic wounded animal mode type of football game between South Carolina and Mississippi State. Both teams, I think, understand greatly that they have got to get a win here. In this contest, both teams probably view this game as a winnable game on their sideline and in their locker room. And for South Carolina, there are some things to like about this matchup, and there are some things I don't necessarily like about this matchup. Let's start with what I like, which is the schematic matchup for South Carolina's offense. I've seen a bunch of people comment about the fact that Mississippi State's 3-3-5 defense, it is a conservative defense, and to a certain extent, you are correct, at least in terms of the coverage aspect. This is definitely a defense that prides itself again on not giving up big-time chunk plays to their opponent, and that's all well and good. But the issue is, when you face a football team like South Carolina that can easily just dig and dunk their way down the football field and have shown that they're willing to do that in multiple football games this season, that's not going to set up to be a good recipe for you. And so I think that Dow Loggins, again, he's going to play this smart to start this football game. He is not going to have Spencer Rattler push the football down the field early. I think that they're going to probably run maybe a lot of RPO action where The passing option goes out to the perimeter. I think you'll see South Carolina just basically throw a bunch of little pop passes out to the edge. And again, they'll let their wide receivers go to work early. As long as they have success with that over time, Mississippi State's defense eventually will have to respect that. And they'll start creeping up a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. And that is when you can catch them in maybe some soft man coverage, some one-on-one opportunities. And that's when you can send some guys down the field on some shot plays, and take your chances then. I feel like that Dal Lawkins has called a good first three games so far this season. Sure, maybe you can argue in the second half against Georgia. There's a couple things he could have done a little bit differently. I would not dispute that. But again, I think he's done quite well. And I think he'll cook up a pretty good game plan for how the Gamecocks are going to attack this 3-3-5 Bulldog defense on Saturday night. Flipping things over to the defensive side of the ball, I do not like this schematic matchup for the Gamecocks defense. Clearly, if South Carolina can find a way to hold Georgia to 24 points, that should give them confidence overall as a defense. But what people like to say about these games is matchups make fights. And for South Carolina, I just don't like the schematic matchup here. Mississippi State is not afraid to run most of their plays out of 11 personnel, where they have a tight end and a running back in the box. Mississippi State, two weeks ago against Arizona, they ran the football a lot. 
Now, this past weekend, they did not do that a whole bunch against LSU. They tried to set up the passing game for Will Rogers early on, which was a bit different than what they did against Arizona. But if I had to put money on it, and I'm not going to, um, I would say that Mississippi State is going to try and see if they can run the football consistently against this Gamecock defense early on in this game. And recent history would tell us that Mississippi State, they're going to probably find some success on the ground here. And again, Woody Marks, he is not a running back to underestimate. This is a guy that if he played for maybe an Alabama or an LSU or Tennessee or Georgia, he would get a lot more attention in this league and in the sport. But because he plays for Mississippi State and Will Rogers is the quarterback on that team, he does not get the attention he probably deserves. I just do not like how this matches up for South Carolina's defense. South Carolina at times has found themselves out of position by just a hair. And last week against Georgia, they showed that, listen, you tired them out. You can make those guys miss tackles pretty doggone easily, a little bit too easily for probably their liking. But this rush defense, again, I've yet to see them take the leap that maybe I thought they could make before this season began. So I do not like how this could go for them at certain points in this game. But there is a key difference here that I do think is going to help put South Carolina over the top. And that's the fact that, again, the Bulldogs have had a lot of growing pains offensively to start this year. They have not been clicking well or efficiently in games facing a team with a pulse. I don't count Southeastern Louisiana State Tech A&M University from week one. Don't count that game. Arizona, much better football team. They sputtered at times in that game. They were lucky that they had a plus four turnover margin in that game. Otherwise, they probably won two right now, just like South Carolina. LSU flat out exposed them last week on the offensive side of the ball. And while I think that the Bulldogs are going to come out here fighting. They're going to be scrappy. They're going to try to play with some pride because, again, they know that they need this game, and they were flat out embarrassed last weekend. The fact that they've had these growing pains, and they are going to be playing in williams Bryce, a really tough environment for South Carolina's opponents to deal with, I think that the crowd atmosphere is going to be a huge advantage for South Carolina in this football game. And I think that at the end of the day, that is going to play an important role in certain moments when the Bulldogs offense is out there on the football field. So with all that being said, I've got the Gamecocks winning this game. Final score, 31 to 17. I believe the spread at FanDuel is currently set at minus six and a half points. Again, if you are a betting man or woman, I would put money down for the Gamecocks to cover that six and a half point spread. Feel pretty confident about that. I don't think they're going to blow out Mississippi State by any means. But I think that South Carolina's got too much going their way heading into this contest. And that's going to showcase itself throughout the 60 minutes of action on Saturday night. How do y'all think this game is going to play out? What do you think the biggest storyline is? And what are your keys to victory for the Gamecocks? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or shoot me a direct message on Twitter at A-Line underscore SC if you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app. But as always, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Friday and a fantastic weekend and enjoy the game if you are traveling to Williams Bryce Stadium. I'll be sure to catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.